Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally, and I mean literally, does not work. All right, I'm on the road as always here, and I had broke some news last night. Joe Boo Sports will be going to training camp. We'll be there. Uh, we'll be getting in L.A. August 1st. We'll be at our first practice. Not a, not a game. Not, not, not a game. Not not the game that I love. We'll be at practice on the second, which will be the second padded practice, the third, the fourth, and we fly back home on that big old jet airliner on the fifth. And so this weekend, we're going to maybe be doing a chip challenge fundraiser. Chip challenge fundraiser. Me and DMV because, hey, it's one of those things that you guys want. You like to see pain. And, and we'll have some pain. We'll, we'll definitely have some pain this weekend. Anyway, in the meantime, as we get ready for training camp, it's already the 6th of July, which means there's only nine days left to get Dalton Schultz's contract done. And uh, not much time if the Cowboys are going to be signing some people. Now, I'm happy that the fake David Hausman has been um, uncovered because it was ridiculous that Bleacher Report was literally putting a fake account of a David Hausman that only had like 128 subscribers on there and posting um, tweets of him like it was the real David Hausman. Either they fell asleep at the wheel or they were just kind of playing a joke on us. But literally, this fool was basically saying the Cowboys are in talk with Anthony Barr. The Cowboys are in talks with um, T.Y. Hilton and everything else and basically bullshitting us. And that's the thing that's kind of crazy is there's a lot of bullshit that goes on out there. So at least that one's been uncovered. But don't fall for the hype because there's so much bullshit out there. You don't know what to believe. You know, uh, you've got CBS Sports that came up this morning, of course, and said that Mike McCarthy is one of the bottom tier coaches in the NFL. And, you know, you've had, of course, Kellen Moore ranked by Pro Football Focus as the number two play caller as well as Dan Quinn, but then you have list of the top 40 uh, coaching coaches under 40, and of course they don't list, you know, Kellen Moore. So, you know, it, it's all about getting clicks because there's just not that much news now. Now, somebody who always gets clicked, no matter what he does or what he says, is Micah Parsons. Micah Parsons says that him, himself, rookie of the year, and Trayvon Diggs, um, a guy who's much mis mis misaligned, I'm, I'm trying to understand how it is all of a sudden now. Interceptions mean nothing in the NFL. Uh, that's what the talking heads out there are trying to get you to believe, where um, in the past, you know, oh, my God, this guy got four interceptions. He's a dog. Our guy, cowboy guy, gets 11. Oh, they, they're not really that good. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. Okay. Aaron Donald... And Diggs, excuse me, Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey, part of the Super Bowl championship team, have been two of the best players in their positions. And, and you could arguably say that Aaron Donald, who will be a first ballot Hall of Famer, um, there's no doubt that he'll be a first ballot Hall of Famer. I will also say that Jalen Ramsey is one of the greatest actors out there because that fool, the way he acted on that, that, that holding play, that holding penalty, yeah, that we got... Pass interference, holding against Michael Gallup. Some bullshit. Great job. He's sitting there. He's holding on to him. Oh, I'm being held and pushed. Yeah, great actor. Great actor. Who just had shoulder surgery, by the way, too. Um, that that dynamic duo has been great. Michael Parsons yesterday says we're going to be even better. Well, that's possible because. Here's the thing. As crazy as it is, you know, Jalen Ramsey's been around for quite a year, quite a few years. Aaron Donald is towards the end of his career, and he is getting older. Um, I think that you probably hit the peak of Aaron Donald. Just do. Jalen Ramsey is already considered one of the best out there. Micah Parsons only had his first season. What if he backs up this year with 15 sacks? Let's just say that. I mean, is that a reach? No. I don't think it's a reach. Let's say Diggs becomes a shutdown corner 
and still continues to get interceptions. And I don't expect him to get 11 again. Uh, that's not going to happen. But if he gets five or six interceptions and becomes an even better cover corner, then you have to start looking at it and saying, yeah, these guys could be that good. It's possible. It's truly possible. The thing I love is now the debate between the Dallas Cowboys and the Philadelphia Eagles on whether or not the Eagles have closed the gap. Well, listening to Speak for Yourself, when they describe the gap, the gap is more like the Grand Canyon of where the Eagles were last year versus the Dallas Cowboys. And you're beginning to have a few people finally getting off the bandwagon of the Eagles or this great team because, you know, here it is, pro football focus, which is all over the map. And I, I dare say that a lot of stuff that they do is because they are looking for attention, which we all are. Um, it says that the Eagles roster is the seventh best in the NFL. The Cowboys about 16th. Okay. All right. Let's listen to end on this for a little bit. I find it amusing. Healthier, but we might not see it statistically correlate. What I'm saying is, I do fervently believe the Cowboys will get better, but it's irrelevant if we don't see it. So I told you two weeks ago I was at Track and Field USA yeah. Championship. Falling. Um, there was a woman by the name J.B. Ann Oliver ran a 1094 in the 100. 1094, by the way, is moving. If you're on sub-11 yeah. as a woman, yeah. you're moving. Yeah. Okay. She ran a 1094 in the 100. That will rank her somewhere around 13th fastest in the world. Yeah. Ran a 1094 in the semifinals and advances to the finals. I believe she wins her heat, maybe second place in her heat. Ran 1094 again in the finals. 1094, mind you, man, why? 1094 in 2021, let her qualify to make the Olympic team first place finisher after Shakari's suspension. 1094 in the semifinals, America track with me. I'm going from here, track, somewhere here. Track. She ran 1094 again in the finals. That's what place she got, sir. Seven. Eight. I was going to say that. She finished last. Damn. Shakari? She finished last with the same 1094 that she won One. her semifinal heat with, and at a minimum, the same 1094 that she won Olympic trials with a year ago. So in theory, she didn't get worse. No. Not going to say that she improved, but she didn't get worse. But everybody else got better, and so much so better okay. that that same first place time now became a last place time. Mm -hmm. The Cowboys, even if they get better, the fact that the Eagles are going to get so much so better. The New York Giants now with Brian Dable, former Bills offensive coordinator. The New York Giants are going to get so much so better. The Washington Commanders, clearly regardless of how they feel about Carson Wentz, he's an upgrade over Taylor Heineke, and they now have Jahan Dobson out of Penn State. They're going to get so much so better that even if the Cowboys stay the same, like J.B. and Oliver stay the same, you're still going to see people pass you or close the gap on you. So it doesn't actually look like you got that. <laughs> I get that example. I get it right there. Um, but to answer the question, the Cowboys are improve this season. And it's interesting with the Cowboys improvement. What does that mean? You said it. it's the result. So let's just call this question what it is. Let's go. Yeah, the Cowboys win a playoff game. Mm. Like That's that. really good. Come on. Like, ain't, a, ain't a hater alive going to say, no, they can. Yeah, they can. Dog. They can. They lost to the San Francisco 49ers on the last play of the game when they were getting white all across that field, but they mm -hmm. figured it out and still lost. So what's going to happen is the Dallas Cowboys, year after year, we always have these lofty expectations. Why? Because we always see these individual great performances from performers, but not individual, like, total team results. So great individual, great, 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 add it up. Oh, that's not it. So maybe this year, let's see if the other formula works. Everyone is going to improve, or maybe not. But you'll have a great result in terms of team performance. Dallas Cowboys own this division. Talk about whoever's improving or how much. That's all on paper. And I got a bunch of paper right here. Philadelphia looks good. Washington looks good. All on paper right here. Great moves, though. I give you that. So let's say they close the gap. What was the gap? The Dallas Cowboys last year in that division, 6-0. and The Dallas Cowboys last year, in terms of point differential, won their games in their division average score 40 
Average opponent score, 17. Close the gap if you want. Let's go to 30 and 20. 30 and 25. Still, the Dallas Cowboys will prevail. Dallas Cowboys had the best record in the entire conference. Yeah, that includes Rebeck. 10 and 2. Now, all of a sudden, Dallas Cowboys, you don't improve, but you will improve in results because all I'm asking you is, can the Dallas Cowboys win a playoff game? And with Mike McCarthy in his third year with Dak Prescott, just like Mike McCarthy with Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers and Dak Prescott, not the same, but in their third year, they were able to mature to a Super Bowl championship, hoping that Dak Prescott, Mike McCarthy in their third year could at least mature to a playoff win. Let's personalize this. I'm looking directly at the answers to the questions uh -oh. I'm about to ask you. So oh, I'm trip. Here we go. Trip. Um, statistically speaking, what was your best season in the National Football League? Statistically? Um, there's only two to even consider. It's uh, my last year in Buffalo, my first year in San Diego. Yes, sir. First I like first year in San Diego, but the purists keep telling me my last year in Buffalo. Why? Well, I missed more games. I was hurt the whole I was hurt both years. Um, Buffalo, because I played the run better, they would say. I have more tackle. Okay. Uh, he's right. He's right. first year in San Diego, 13 and a half uh, sacks. Phenomenal. That was the only year that my guy, Marcellus Wiley, was a, what, all pro as I see, you got the asterisk mark by you. All pro. Yeah, yeah. Big beast. Yes. Oh, oh. But as he just said, the purists would say, the year in Buffalo was better. Mm -hmm. Now, you didn't get the same accolades for the year in San Diego. I know why. You didn't have the same numbers for the year in San Diego. What? But the football purists would say that you were actually a more improved player in Buffalo than you were in San Diego. The point I just made, we might not see it statistically correlate. Zeke, he might be healthier, but we might not see it statistically mm -hmm. correlate. What I'm saying is, I do fervently believe the Cowboys will get better, but it's irrelevant if we don't see it. So I told you two weeks ago, I was at Track and Field USA yeah. Championship. Um, there was a woman by the name... Did they are literally replaying it? Okay, alright. Anyway... We're going to have to wait and see what happens when they actually get out on the field. Um, personally, I think that the Eagles have a long way to go, and I still think that Jalen Hurts will be what hurts the Eagles season. I just don't think that he is the quarterback that all of a sudden people think that he's going to be great. Um, we've been through this before. Last year with, of course, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Yeah, remember when everybody was touting Ryan Fitzpatrick? Oh, he's going to be enough for Washington? Yeah, well, he didn't make it through the first game. And as far as Carson Wentz goes, it's kind of funny how Facebook comes back around with uh, posts that you've done in the past. And two years ago, I had a post on Facebook about Carson Wentz, who was leading the NFL in fumbles. He had 44 at the time, the most since 2016. So... Put that in your pipe and smoke it. I'm Mark Holmes, and well, I'll see you guys soon. Peace.